Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today I'm taking a look at two things. One, we've got Death Zone 2021, the ultimate Blood Bowl companion, expanded rules for Blood Bowl, the second season edition. We've also got Spike issue 12, uh, Spike magazine, um, and the Spike Cup, of course, are classic uh, lore things in Blood Bowl. Um, and we'll tend to do team features. In this one, we've got a team feature on the Bogenhof Barons, which is the new Imperial Nobility team, uh, and the Black Orcs, Thunder Valley Greenskins, including some like examples of like starting rosters and stuff. So we'll save this for the end. We're gonna go through Death Zone because this is the core mechanics uh, update of like optional expanded rules for your games of Blood Bowl. And there's a lot in here. Like um, it keeps the same fun, like sort of cartoony art style. I'm gonna hurt someone's feelings, but I gotta do this. I'm gonna, gonna flatten this a little bit. Um, and it adds tons of new inducements, uh, like famous coaching staff. So in addition to like your star players, there's now famous sideline personalities and stuff you can have. Uh, new wizards and wizard types with their spells as inducements. Uh, biased refs, so some famous refs as well. Yorn the Ogre, Thorin Corrinson, Randolph Red Hakuli, and the Thunder Foot, Trundle Foot Triplets. I'm really hoping all of these get uh, miniatures at some point because it's just a fun thing. New different inducements too, like a Wad Drummer. Cavorting Nurglings, uh, Dwarven Runesmiths, Halfling Hot Pots, Master Ballistics, Bottles of Heady Brew, Team Mascots, um, and um, Medical Unguents, and then Side Bets and stuff. Uh, then there's Fabulous Freebooters. These are the build your own mercenary uh, star player, basically, rules. And they're really neat. There's like a whole bunch of different types. Uh, rules for giants, having the biggest of the big guys in your game. They take up nine squares when they move around. Uh, major sponsors, different stadium rules, different rules for the different types of balls in the game, new weather tables, match events, and playing Blood Bowl 7s. Official rules for Blood Bowl 7s, which I'll be giving a try uh, with Owen, and I'm probably the most excited about 7s is a different size pitch, playing with 7 players instead of 11, and it's more like quick lunch hour Blood Bowl. It evolved literally out of the design studio, uh, wanting to be able to play Blood Bowl in like 30 minutes when they're eating lunch, or under an hour basically. Uh, and it's a great way of playing the game. So I'm pumped that it's in here, and this is going to be a great uh, a great addition to the, the game and playing the roster. So uh, let's jump in. What do we get? We get a whole bunch more background, so expanding on the core rulebook's background, um, including all the different areas where the game is played, like Athelore and the World's Edge, the Darklands outside the Old World, the Badlands, Lustria, Land of the Dead, the Chaos Maze. I love this. <laughs> you got the, the Lizardmen-like little... Um, like dais here where it's like inscribed with people playing Blood Bowl. I love how goofy the Blood Bowl universe is, but at the same time it takes itself so seriously. Like, if you're gonna commit, commit. Uh, then we get to our new inducements, um, and this is of course gonna be all the cool coaching staff. So you can take up to two infamous coaching staff. We got Kerry Coldsteel, uh, an Elven Kingdoms League from the Asgard Ravens. Sorry, um, from the, where she played for? Uh, she's available to any team with the Elven Kingdoms League, sorry, Illustrian Super League, Old World Classic, or Old World's Edge Super League Special Rules. So basically good guy teams. Uh, Carrie counts as two temp agency cheerleaders. In addition, if her team cannot set up 11 players at the start of drive, Carrie can decide to show them how it's done. Her team's coach can choose to set her up as part of the team. <laughs> so she'll jump in. So she will have a miniature, I'm hoping, at some point. There's, there isn't even a drawing of her in here, I don't think. Uh, but she's strength two. And she's moved 6, Strength 2, Agility 3+, plus, Passing 5+, plus, Armor 8+, plus, and she's got Block, Dauntless, Frenzy, and the Loner. <laughs> she's amazing. So she's a murderous cheerleader. Uh, you've got um, Papa Skullbones. Uh, he's 80,000 and available to any team with Favorative or Underworld Challenge. So he's a Chaos player, basically. By the power of the gods! <laughs> uh, although the official religion of Blood Bowl is Nuffalism, any number of other arguably lesser gods are worshipped in many of its followers, particularly by Chaos. Um, so you basically can um, uh, gain, like, roll a d8 and gain a skill. Like, you can be unworthy and be struck down and be knocked out, or you can get, like, grizzly bifurcation and gain extra arms and two heads. Uh, Galandril Silverwater, available to the uh, Elven League characters. He's got Go Team. Each time Galandril's team rolls cheering fans on the kickoff table. This is a, um, a cheerleader. Add d3 the number of cheerleaders the team has. Is the team does not have any cheerleaders, it counts having one. In addition, each time Galandril's team makes a roll in the prayers and apple table, a natural 15 or 16 uh, rolled in the D16. If a D8 is being rolled in the exhibition play, another natural D8 is rolled, you get an additional re-roll. So just a better cheerleader for elves. For 40,000. Crot Shock Whisker. <laughs> uh, a doctor, basically. A new player and a patient. <laughs> Um, who can, you know, try and put people back on and have complications. The player condition worsens. The coach of the opposing team rolls in the couch table determines exactly what's happened. That's so funny. Um, infamous, uh, sorry, Aileen Andar. 
able to any team uh, to talent scout. Is a talent scout a particular note? If this team took on any journeyman during step three of the pregame, alien will ensure that they're the best of the best. Uh, roll a d6 and apply a minus one for each journeyman taken on. So you, if you do one, it's just a d6. Um, roll one or less, the journeyman is a, is a team player but doesn't show any particular talent and they lose their loner. On a two to five, they have some potential. They gain a random skill from the primary skill tables. On a six, they produce a player with real star quality. The journeyman player randomly determines, um, so, sorry, gains two randomly selected skills from the primary skill sets. And each journeyman counts towards your CTV as normal. That's neat. So you basically get better journeyman with him. He's 100 grand. Uh, Professor Frankenheim, have you thought about an upgrade? You can upgrade your guys. Mungo Spinecracker <laughs> for Badlands Brawl, Old World Classic or Underworld Challenge. I'm fine, thanks Mungo. Whenever you get KO'd, <laughs> roll and see what happens before you move him from play. That's funny. Mungo treats the patient. <laughs> uh, Fink to Fixer, your betting guy, he's a goblin. Available to either Badlands Brawl or Underworld Challenge. Uh, Schleidlin Schlartzen. <laughs> anyway, agents for players. And you got our new wizards. Uh, zero to one, available to various teams. And you can get a Chaos Sorcerer for 150. Once per turn, the Chaos Sorcerer can do a Thunderbolt or a Rampant Mutation. Uh, Druki Sports Sorceress can do Thunderbolt or a Thousand Cuts. The Azer High Mage can do Temporal Distortion or Thunderbolt. So everybody gets Thunderbolt, basically, it looks like. The Slan gets Tectonic Shift, Reality Blinks, or Temporal Distortion, because the Slan's the best 200,000 wizard once per game. Uh, Horticulturalist of Nurgle, <laughs> he plants things, gets vi Vigorous growth, growth or um, Strange Flora. Strange Flora on a 3+, plus, the player is unexpectedly attacked by demonic plants of prodigious size. <laughs> on a 1 or 2, the player manages to duck and nothing happens. Sports Necrothurge for Sylvanian Spotlight teams. A Wicked Witch. I love this. Like, just random stuff like this. Like, these are the drinks they drink in the stadium. I <laughs> love There's a reusable cup that makes me happy. Warlock Engineer for the Skaven with Warp Lightning and stuff. Ogre Firebelly. That's cool. I have a Firebelly miniature. Can cast a Fireball or Column of Fire. Night Goblin Shaman. Look at that. <laughs> He's... <laughs> I like that he's got his like Quidditch scarf on. He's got his beer hat and he's huffing mushrooms. <laughs> this book is the best. Uh, Horatio X. Schottenheim, a master mage. He's a name wizard and he's available at 18. And he likes to light things on fire. Biased refs. Randolph Red Hokuli, available at any team with either Lustrian Super League or Old World Classic. Uh, Thorin Corinson, uh, World's Edge Super League, can be available too. I don't get how, maybe, I, I'm just trying to figure out how the, you decide the rep. I guess there's like a background reason. Uh, and then other inducements, you get a drummer for your orc teams, your Badlands Brawl, Cavorting Nurglings, if you're favorite of Nurgle. <laughs> I love the three Nurglings, they're so dumb looking. Uh, Dwarven Runesmith, Halfling Hotpot. This, what this book reads like is there's going to be a whole bunch of Fortress models coming out this year and they're, this book is setting them up. Because there's no pictures of miniatures in here. If you see, it's all just art. Um, and so I figure we're going to see this stuff get spoiled probably going forward. Unless, I mean, some of this may have come out already. There'd be probably a few pieces. Like, I know there's the, the refs and stuff. Uh, and that's the one I'm really excited about. Fabulous Freebooters, the expanded rules for mercenary players. So you can take up to three mercenary players as an inducement, and their pricing quantities varies. To create a mercenary player, the first thing to do is decide on the type. And there's five different types to choose from. Stunty superstars, legendary linemen, brutal blockers, reliable ringers, or bona fide big guys. Each type is a profile, and you can select skills, traits, and a basic hiring fee and their gold price. And then to this profile, you can add skills or traits. So for instance, if you want to take a stunty superstar, Available to any team. So I can hire a stunty, like a goblin or a halfling, and it doesn't say what he is, just that he's a stunty. So you can use any miniature you want. You could have a goblin that happens to play for a human team. Like, whatever story you want for your mercenaries, just go for it. Um, and they have this core stat line for 30,000. They're move 5, strength 2, agility 3, passing 4, AV 6, dodge, loner, 4 plus, right stuff, stunty. And then you can buy them extra skills. For 10 grand, you can buy them an agility skill. 20, you can buy them two or more agility skills. Uh, 40, you can buy a general skill. Um, and then a single, so it's a single one of those, a single one of those, and a single mutation for 30,000. So you can take like a, you can make this a Skaven guy, make it almost anything. And then it's, um, may improve or reduce any characteristic by two as follows. Uh, and that's improve your move allowance by one for 30, agility by one for 40, passing by one for 30, 
AV by one for 30. And any characteristic can be reduced by one for 10 grand to a minimum of 30,000. So uh, you can basically drop your stats as well and make them even squishier. I love this. I love that you can make your own like, your own stuff. And then you can buy packages of stuff as well if you want to take like a ball and chain secret weapon. So like, why not have a chainsaw on your human team? Let's just do it. All those old star player miniatures that might not have a home anymore from like the, the yesteryears of Blood Bowl, you can probably create a cool mercenary using these rules. Uh, legendary lineman. Um, so again, you start with a 50k, like just sort of standard lineman stat with loner. You can buy them skills, you can buy them characteristic increases, you can get like dirty player and sneaky get. Um, you can gain dirty player stinky get skills, but replace the loner with loner five plus for 90. And, this, and these are only available to certain teams, right? So like gain chainsaw available to any team. Uh, get stab and secret weapon is available to Badlands Brawl, Elven Kingdoms, um, Lustrian Super League, Old World Classic, Sylvanian Spotlight, Underworld Challenge, and World's Egg Super League. So these guys aren't gonna stay on your team, mind you, but they're inducements that you could hire every game if you want. So if you want your league to have some cool like special characters, you can make these up. You can have two linemen up to one blocker, has like standard like almost black work stats for 70k and then can buy you know a chainsaw so why not if they get thrown off i guess who cares uh reliable ringers these are your like elven types with high agility and high passing and then bona fide big guys again standard bonehead loner mighty blow with her teammate and then they buy trade packages you can get a ball and chain no hands really stupid and secret weapon trade for and plus two strength but your move is reduced by one and it's available to teams with Badlands Brawl, Favorite of, Lustrian Super League, Old World Classic, or Underworld Challenge special rules. I don't know what that's supposed to be. It's some kind of like death chariot, I guess. <laughs> it's crazy. I love it. So much, so much crazy, like, like building your own stuff. And then we're into the Giants. And this is basically, um, these are not standard rules. These are like by an agreement only. <laughs> uh, the following pages contain rules for using Giants in your games of Blood Bowl. Coaches should note that these rules are entirely optional and not required. <laughs> um, you should play them in exhibition games and it should only be used in a league or tournament at the commissioner's discretion. So you can see here, it, hold, oh, sorry, it holds up four squares, not nine. Um, but when it moves, it moves D12 so it can walk, basic, or it scatters to those locations and it moves, it moves through two squares at the same time. Its move is six, strength seven, base, agility five, passing five, armor 11 plus, always hungry, bonehead, break tackle, juggernaut, loner four plus, mighty blow plus two, multiple blocks, stand firm and throw teammate. That's, it's crazy. Giants are big, bigger than ogres, mentors, trolls, or any other big guy that regularly takes to the pitch. <laughs> so that is a huge tackle zone, but only to the front. Note, you can't, it has a facing and it can't see behind itself. So it does give up having a back um, tackle zone to be so giant. Uh, sponsorship, you get your sponsors, and you can redraft an ongoing sponsor, so like Big Murdy's Burger Emporium, Far Blast and Sons Ordnance Solutions, Star Insurance Guild, Steel Home Sporting Emporium. Uh, your stadium types, so playing away games, you can get a random stadium result if you want to just like roll. Like it doesn't really matter what pitch you use, although you could have like a specific pitch you want to sort of like use. Um, but before step one of the pregame sequence, roll 2d6 in the random stadium table and see what you get. So it could be like an unusual playing surface, uh, it could be a rough and ready stadium. It's clearly prioritized bloody violence. Roll a d6 on this, uh, those attributes. Six states, nothing out of the or an ordinary luxury stadium or a local crowd. Um, the stadium's home crowd is quirky to say the least, but their dedicated fans of Blood Bowl will certainly make the game one to remember. So you roll that on this table to see what attribute it has. So like for instance, unusual playing surface could be like water, ice, astrogranite, uneven footing, or solid stone. The rough and ready, apathetic officials. <laughs> Every team gets a free bribe. Poorly built dungeons. Long ago, the RARG realized that sending off certain players didn't work. And many a career uh, cheat just kept sneaking back on. Uh, so during step two of the drive sequence, each coach rolls D6 for their players that have been sent off for any reason. On a five, once they come back to the reserve box, <laughs> so you guys that get like fouled off will um, will come back. Luxury stadium with uh, things like broadcasting studios. Uh, during step four of the pregame sequence, star players, mercenary players, infamous coaching staff, name wizards, and bias refs can all be induced for D3 times 100 uh, times 10 grand less than normal because they want to show up and be seen. Right. So if there's a broadcast studio there, they're like more likely to get hired. And then local crowd, things like know-it-all hecklers, <laughs> fickle fans, or Solomon Silent. Uh, and then you can become a resident of a local pitch and with your ongoing sponsorships and stuff like that. If a team uh, finds a stadium they like, they might petition the owners to keep them there. And you try and roll it, you see what happens. You gotta win usually. 
And then rules for all the different balls. Now, every miniature comes with a different ball. <laughs> like, it's called a load of balls, too. So, <laughs> uh, a ball for every race. Astute readers were noticed that many of the balls described here tie with the balls that come with certain teams, but that not all are covered. In truth, the various balls that come with the different teams fall into several broad types. This list is designed uh, to cover all those in broad terms. So it's not exact, right? But the idea is if you want to use a special ball, once per game during step one, the coach can declare they're going to use a special ball. Uh, there's two ways to do it. They can roll a d6 or they can select one. So you can just choose to like use a dark ball of majesty or a snotling ball suit or a limp and squig ball. And then you apply those results. So for instance, the demonic ball, whenever a player picks it up on a three plus, it's normal. On a one or a two, they recoil in horror and refuse to even try. <laughs> the ball will bounce, but there's no turnover. Um, and if it bounces in an occupied square, you can try and catch it as normal. Additionally, when a player carrying the ball ends their movement, if no pass has been made, roll a d6 on a one, the player must attempt to pass it on a team if possible, or an empty square if no friendly player is in passing range. <laughs> Finally, when a demonic ball comes to rest in an unoccupied square, roll a d6. If on a roll of six, the ball cracks, weakening the uh, dark enchantment, allowing the demon to get free for the remainder of the game. It's a normal ball. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just like random stuff like that. The draconic egg, the shady special ball, the ball of dark majesty, the soulstone ball, the greedy nurgling ball. The extra spiky ball, the limp and squig ball with a broken leg. At the start of each turn, the limp and squig ball will make a break for freedom. If the ball's in possession, roll a d6. On a 2 plus, it's fine. On a 1, the squig breaks free and bounces. <laughs> Note that this is not a turnover. If the limp and ball squig is not in possession, uh, that's sort of a team turn, it will hop away d3 times. <laughs> Additionally, should any player score a touchdown with the limp and squig ball, on a 1, the squig stinks its yellow fangs into their hand, and their agility is reduced by 1 for the rest of the game. New weather, so by seasons, spring, summer, autumn. Uh, and the idea here is the commissioner will say it's this season, so play with these tables, basically. Winter, subterranean, primordial rainforest. Graveyard weather, desolate wastelands, mountainous weather, coastal weather, desert weather. And then match events. If match events are in use, each coach should roll a d6 at the start of each of their team turns after moving the turn marker. Now this is where it gets truly crazy. Um, the coach and the active team immediately rolls a d8, and the coach and the uh, inactive rolls a d6. Both consult to see what happens. So, yeah, the d8 is going to be down here, and then the d6. So, like, it's one, two, three, four of these tables, and then the d6 is which one happens. So, like, a wish demon appears for some reason. Um, there's a feud, a moment of glory, a streaker <laughs> who just shows up on the table. Like, if you want to play some truly chaotic Blood Bowl, I definitely want to try these because they're insane. And then Blood Bowl 7s, all right, so here it is, Blood Bowl 7s, playing smaller games of Blood Bowl. So first, the pitch. Um, has some key differences, it has two end zones, one each end of the pitch, two wide zones, uh, which are two squares wide, um, and I'm hoping they actually sell the 7s pitch. Uh, at, and having a picture of it here means that they've drafted one, so I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be able to buy a 7s pitch at some point, I really hope I can, I, I can pre-order one. Um, and then the center field, wide zone. So like you can play it just by marking off a smaller pitch if you wanted to on your Blood Bowl pitch. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to buy one. Drafting a sevens team, you get 600,000 to draft them, hiring players, uh, each roster element as available as normal, number of players, each, every Blood Bowl sevens team must consist of a minimum of seven uh, when it's first drafted and you can never have more than 11. You get journeyman. So actually what's nice about sevens is a single Blood Bowl team box covers sevens forever because you can never have more than like comes with 12 models you can never have more than 11 models on the team um player positions alignment of the backbone all teams uh have 0 to 12 instead of 0 to 16 regardless of uh name for any of those races other positions big guys a blood bowl sevens team may include a maximum of four players that are not linemen so you can't max out on other stuff a Blood Bowl 7's team may not include more players of a certain type that are allowed in the team roster. So for instance, if you have an Elven Union team, you can have up to two blisters. So your ma maximums are still there for all the positional players, but you can never have more than four positional players in the team, period. Because there's seven guys, you could easily have seven positional players playing and no one's a lineman, right? You have to have actual linemen on the team, at least three. Uh, you can still hire journeymen, and they replace their loaner 4 plus with a 5 plus instead. Purchasing team rerolls, each team can purchase up to six when they're drafted. Uh, they're amateur side teams. A Blood Bowl 7's team must pay double for each team reroll it wishes to purchase. Uh, and unlike ordinary Blood Bowl teams, uh, they cannot purchase additional team rerolls later. Ongoing team training isn't a strength of amateur teams. So you gotta buy the rerolls you're gonna have. So it, it does mean that because you can't draft so high anyway into the team, you're not gonna have to, you're not, those extra monies are basically going into paying for your rerolls that are gonna be the only rerolls you ever have in your league. 
hiring sideline staff. Uh, you don't get as much assistance because obviously this is just a kind of a rookie team or a, a amateur team. So you have three assistant coaches, up to six cheerleaders, and apothecary. And then you can still get dedicated fans. And then playing sevens, you get your inducement list. You still get Paris the Nuffle, but it's a D8 instead. Special setup and kickoff rules. Both teams set up fully within the area of their own end zone and their line of scrimmage. So you, you don't actually set up on the line of scrimmage, you set up in between. There's actually a no man's land and you set up here and here with your opponent as opposed to setting up in the middle. And then each player can set up a maximum of one player in the wide zone, it's only two squares wide anyway. Uh, team must set up a minimum of three players in the squares that are center field, uh, directly adjacent to their line of scrimmage, because there's two lines of scrimmage now. And note that should a team find itself reduced to only three players or fewer, it must concede. And then you get a new kickoff table, a new injury table, which is a D12, sorry, 2D6 instead of a, um, a D16, and then a stunty injury table. And you can still use your apothecaries, you still get player advancements with value increases, and then you can play with desperate measures. And that's it. Look at these guys. Oh, man. The Badlands, the Goblin Team. That's a beautiful Goblin Team painted by Jonathan Taylor York. Some lovely Dark Elves. Mark Bedford's Shambling Undead. Mark, yeah, great job on these. Oh, look at how smooth those colors are. And then uh, Andrew King's Nurgle Team. I love that Mark Bedford is still playing Blood Bowl all these years later. Uh, we got some. Oh, Mark did a Nurgle Team, too. I love the way Mark paints. It's like, I don't know, it's like, um, what's the term? It's uh, impressionistic. It's got nice blends of colors. And then more Jonathan Taylor York teams. Louise, oh, she did an awesome looking goblin team. Ah, don't feed the trolls. The skin on that troll is amazing. And a lot of the new star players and stuff. Glart Smasher, fan favorite fat rat. And that's it. A look through Death Zone, the ultimate global companion. Um, and now let's have a quick flip through the Spike issue 12. So this one's all featuring the Boganoff Barons uh, and the Thunder Valley Greenskins. And it gives you some more background basically on those teams. Because these teams are brand new, so it's kind of cool that this was done to kind of feature where they come from, how they've like behaved sort of like typically in the leagues. Um, and sort of the history of them. Because one of the things is, I love the idea of there being new Blood Bowl teams, but Blood Bowl is such an old and story game that you kind of want some, uh, some like, some more information on these new teams because the other ones have so much background, you need them to kind of catch up. So more about their positionals. Other teams besides the Boganoff Barons, which is what I painted mine as, the Ostermark Dukes, the Averland Earls, you know, the Hawkland Highborns, and the Wizzleland Viscounts. I wish they'd done color schemes for them. It's the only thing that isn't in here. And then you get team profiles, so like their career highlights, their, um, their like 2049, uh, 2499 to 2500 squad. It's 2 million gold. And then some examples of, so here's Griff and his like history and a player card for him. And then the uh, players, their actual like, like roster for the players themselves. I can break down all their positionals. Uh, some examples of how to develop them and some, some skills to consider. Some basic setups. Like I like there's actually some plays in here too for each one. The different types of balls that they have. Uh, an interview with uh, Mindy Pie Whistle. <laughs> and then we're on to the Black Orcs. And examples of why the Black Orcs decided to start their own teams. Because they're just smarter than other Orcs. They just know they're better. And uh, so do the Goblins that play with them. These are all the players that they'll get as eligible star players. I like the Grack and Crumbleberry will play for them, even though they're probably going to try and eat Crumbleberry. <laughs> the TVG, their uh, 2 million seasonal thing. And there's Varag. Now, he's not new, and neither is Griff. Varag Gulchuler is one of the OG um, Blood Bowl players in Blood Bowl, as star players go. Their positional breakdowns for the players, uh, the Black Rooks, Train Troll, and the Goblins. Some starting roster examples. Uh, neither of these are the way I started. I went for most models and forgot to take rerolls. That's why my team's not doing very well. Some setup examples. A chat with the rat. And then coffin corner, an expensive mistake, candles, liquor. And of course, the brutal game with uh, Bob and Jim. An example of some very old school, uh, like, but it's modern because these are all like the new characters, but like an old school style of uh, Citadel comic. These comics used to be all over White Dwarf, which is amazing. I love it. And there's the uh, TVG. I'll paint it up. Lovely paint jobs. 
So there you go. So if you're jazzed about more info on the 2D games that come in the, the second season box, this issue is slammed full of stuff for them, like how to play them, some examples of um, starting teams, and of course some tactics and stuff too. Uh, and as they are brand new teams, there's not going to be a ton online for them because people haven't played them in seasons yet, so it's useful to look at. And then Death Zone, tons of new stuff to play. I'm pumped for Sevens. I really, really hope there's going to be a... Uh, a pitch to play it on because the one thing that I do love is I love playing Blood Bowl. It's hard to film it though because I, I spent a whole day almost filming a single game of Blood Bowl because they do they do go long. So being able to play some sevens is exciting. So if you're a Blood Bowl fan, these are two great new add-ons. Obviously, if you're a team fan of those teams, Spikes is going to be exciting. But for any Blood Bowl fan, playing sevens and all the new additional like wacky rules for um, leagues and stuff is going to be great too. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more GMG reviews in the future. Till then, I'm Ash. How about it? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.